A reading from the book of Numbers. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses on the pretext of the marriage he had contracted with a Cushite woman. They complained, Is it through Moses alone that the Lord speaks? Does he not speak through us also? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses himself was by far the meekest man on the face of the earth. So at once the Lord said to Moses and Aaron and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the meeting tent. And the three of them went. Then the Lord came down in the column of cloud, and standing at the entrance of the tent, called Aaron and Miriam. When both came forward, he said, Now listen to the words of the Lord. Should there be a prophet among you, in visions will I reveal myself to him, in dreams will I speak to him. Not so with my servant Moses. Throughout my house he bears my trust. Face to face I speak to him, plainly and not in riddles. The presence of the Lord he beholds. Why then did you not fear to speak against my servant Moses? So angry was the Lord against them, that when he departed and the cloud withdrew from the tent, there was Miriam, a snow-white leper. When Aaron turned and saw her a leper, he said to Moses, Ah, my Lord, please do not charge us with the sin that we have foolishly committed. Let her not thus be like the stillborn babe that comes forth from its mother's womb with its flesh half consumed. Then Moses cried to the Lord, Please, not this. Pray, heal her. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned, that you may be justified in your sentence, vindicated when you condemn. Indeed, in guilt was I born, and in sin my mother conceived me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not off from your presence and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They do not wash their hands when they eat a meal. He summoned the crowd and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what enters one's mouth that defiles the man, but what comes out of the mouth is what defiles one. Then his disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He said in reply, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. Miriam, the sister of Moses, and Aaron, the brother of Moses, begin to complain about Moses and speak badly of him, accusing him of having married the Cushite woman, which means an Egyptian woman, a foreigner, and other things, because they believe that since God has spoken also to them, 
they should be as important as Moses. Notice the familial jealousy, the attempt to grasp at authority as if it were power that they could control. Well, God punishes Miriam, makes her into a leper, and this is a sign that he has chosen Moses in a special way. One of the hardest things in the spiritual life is to accept that God has given us certain gifts and not others. And God has given other people those gifts that we might very well want. Why is it that God has chosen them and not us for these particular gifts? And the answer is because. God chooses because this is what is best for us. And sometimes the most important thing in the spiritual life is to find the humility to accept God's will, even if it's not what we want it. Well, it's interesting that Moses, even though his sister and brother had talked against him, intercedes for Miriam. This is an example of a good leader, that he doesn't hold on to hurts, hold on to resentments, but rather intercedes for all the people who need it, not because they deserve it, but because they need it. The Gospel is from Matthew 14, 22-36. Jesus goes away by himself to pray for a bit, and this is something he does very often in the Gospels. He's surrounded by people who are seeking miracles, who are asking his favors, and he has to pull back in order to make sure that he keeps his head on straight, that he is one with the Father. Well, the disciples are crossing the boat, and in the fourth watch of the night, which would be the time just before dawn, they see him walking on the lake. He has power over nature. Peter says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come across the water. Now, Peter's a bit impetuous, and in fact, when Jesus tells him to come, he goes out and begins to walk on the water himself. He's not doing this through his own authority, but rather through the authority of Jesus, who has given him this command. Nevertheless, once he's gone a few steps, he realizes what he's doing, and fear takes over and he begins to sink, so the Lord has to rescue him. So in Peter, we see a willingness to try something new, to believe, and also the realization that his faith is weak. And that's a good place to be, because sometimes we think that if we just have a strong enough faith, we can do anything. But notice, we think we can do anything when it's the Lord who's working in us. As soon as we take charge, we get into trouble. We have to let the Lord guide us and rescue us. It's interesting that this episode only appears in the Gospel of Matthew, and it's not that far away from the point at which Peter will say, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God and Jesus will give him the keys of the kingdom. The message being that Peter, even though he's fallible, even though he's a little broken and a little bit impetuous, is nevertheless chosen to be the leader of the church. And the people come to recognize that Jesus is in their neighborhood, and they go up to him and they just seek to touch the fringes of his cloak. Remember, Jewish people have four fringes that stick out in their underwear as a sign that they're different, It's almost like wearing a miraculous medal or something, that we are not like other people. We belong to the Lord in a special way. So these fringes were sort of decorative, but also a reminder to the people that they are Jewish. They belong to God. People want to touch the least significant part of Jesus' garment. They know he has so much authority that even that will be sufficient for him to respond to their needs. Notice here we see a, a faith that appears almost more powerful than that of Peter because they're willing to trust in the least significant part of the garment where Peter is found in an episode in which his faith fails him. And may God bless us.